Hi guys, um, welcome back to another advanced guide with Samiris. Today we're going to have a look at hypertubes. So we will uh, look a bit at the basics of course and then going to uh, see um, how we can build them and in the final part of the video I will go into the details of uh, accelerating yourself in hypertubes. I think I found something pretty new most of you might not know and that will be in the last part of the video so make sure to either watch through it or to skip to that. As usual a thumbs up or subscribe would be absolutely awesome. So thanks for everyone who is doing that and, and one more thing on my own part um, I'm starting streaming or I started streaming I'm um, streaming Tuesdays at um, 6 p.m. GMT so I would be really really happy to see you there as well if you have any special questions or so I will be happy to answer them in the stream if I am able to. So yeah, hopefully see you there. So unlocking the hypertube is pretty straightforward. Uh, the hypertube are in tier 4 under the node hypertubes. Uh, there you get all the basics, so you get um, 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 the entrance, the hypertube itself, and the basic pillars and stackable pillars and in addition to that in the awesome shop under attachments you find the uh, hypertube wall mounts and hypertube wall holes as well with that you have everything uh, for hypertubes to start building your network so building the pipes themselves is pretty straightforward you just need some copper sheets and steel pipes and you have four different um, methods to build the pipe. You can switch between them with the R key. That's standard um, 3D conveyor, uh, noodle and vertical. So um, I'm going to show you them in different uh, configurations so you can see the difference. Uh, basically the uh, vertical and the standard is always the same. Uh, unless you uh, build in three dimensions or you build up, then there will be difference. I'll show you later. And uh, the 3D conveyor tries to emulate uh, the way conveyors build. Um, and that's actually the only thing I would use them for to uh, build. Uh, below or up of on a conveyor there they are useful otherwise they really are not i don't think uh, i don't like them and the noodle is a little bit more curvy and you can get a lot uh, closer together with the noodles as i said as soon as you go in the third dimension there is a difference between the default and the vertical. So the default is going to give you a diagonal line um, pretty similar to what uh, the 3D conveyor does if it's vertical working uh, just a little bit more rounded and the vertical will try to make vertical lines and there is a difference between you start from the bottom or you start from the top as you can see there. So um, the, there's a difference where the vertical, um, the corner in the, in the line will be. So um, if you have uh, the outputs already looking down, the um, conveyor, 3D conveyors gets a little bit tricky um, because um, conveyors can't go straight down and the 3D conveyor tried to emulate it's working in some weird cases but it's really really not made for um, vertical applications. Noodle is working just fine of course 
and the um, vertical gets a little bit strange at that point. So when you go from up to down, it's just working as expected, but when you go from down to up, it makes this diagonal. And I really have no clue why. And I couldn't figure out any rules when it is doing a diagonal when it's doing a straight. So I'm sorry for that. As usual with the 3D conveyor, um, I have a vertical tube, so um, it doesn't really work right. So when you're using the 3D conveyor, try to avoid uh, vertical supports. Um, yeah, the noodle is working just as expected. Um, and for the vertical, yeah, you, you see again, um, there are some funny diagonals, um, don't know. Um, just try to build them from both sides and you should be just fine. So when when you angle them uh, like uh, that, so you have one side angled, um, it's looking like that. Um, pretty curvy with the uh, noodles of course and the vertical lines. Uh, make some, well, unexpected uh, diagonals. Uh, so, yeah. I, I would actually hope that they would make two turns and still have a straight vertical, but they don't really do that. They have something funny going on like that. So, uh, looks a little bit like the default, but it isn't, because you have one more corner in, in it. I, I really don't know. Um, just try uh, to, uh, well, even don't angle them or try to check them from both sides so you find the best way to build them for you. Can be a little bit um, hit in this. So if you, if you do it a little bit more angled, so by 90 degrees um, instead of 44 degrees, um, you get that a little bit um, more accented, but you could actually uh, still um, the same funny things. So the last one you can see it's um, pretty uh, actually nearly as you would like that. So now it's working. If you angle it by 45 degrees, that doesn't. I, I don't. But like I said, just. Do a little bit hit and trial. It isn't really difficult, you just have to figure out uh, how to build it. So as a small example what you can do, I built a small uh, nexus of hypertube entrances. Um, I used the glass wall and uh, placed the hypertubes below that. So uh, let's see what that looks from below. So we have the hypertubes uh, under the glass wall. And it looks a little bit like the hypertubes go through holes in the glass into the accelerators. So actually you can see how the accelerators uh, barely go through the glass and it gives all of that pretty clean look, I think. So building it, it's pretty easy. You just take the normal hypertube support, place it wherever you like and uh, turn it so it's um, going vertical. Then you can connect the hypertube uh, directly below that without any problem. Um, just need to switch to noodle and there you go. So that easy you can have an hypertube connected through the glass foundation and then you place an entrance of course on it and that's it and now you need to touch the hypertube to get in it so you can walk next to it without any problem at all and that's how i'm going to do my entrances so that's my entrance to my um, storage and the entrance is next to that on the other side is the entrance to my first factory floor. Uh, I placed this wall support uh, on top of that 
that way I make sure that I don't jump uh, too high when I leave the hypertube on the other way around. Then on the hypertube I don't enter directly again and can just walk off it without any problem or walk uh, at it again to do the same again. So that's how easy it is. So there are basically two options to accelerate yourself. The first and main option uh, for acceleration is uh, you can just build multiple um, hypertube entrances in succession. Each hypertube entrance will give you a little bit additional speed. And the speed gain is kind of um, exponential. So I'm going to show you how much speed you gain with different amounts of uh, entrances in a short collage. But before you, we do that, I just wanted to show you, I leave a little bit room between the entrances just to make the counting easier and give me additional point of uh, exits and ingresses, but you actually wouldn't need that. So you can place the entrances like I did here, just um, directly between an exit and it will be working just fine. Actually it will be even be a little bit faster. But if you come back from an, uh, something like that, you will be stuck in there. You can avoid that by building entrances and exits on both sides. But that means double the power drain and you get accelerated when you come out also, so that's not really perfect as well. So I try to do something like that, that way I can just walk out there and be happy. So down below you see the number of entrants we are currently at. And just to show you the difference, I'm showing you a 1 again. Uh, but now we will go up steadily. And as you can see, we get a little bit faster each time. And it's it's not really expansionally faster, uh, exponentially faster, but it is a linear acceleration as well. Um, not really sure how they calculate that, but um, for you, important to know it's it's going to each one going to gives you a lot of additional speed. So you see with 15 already we're getting getting really fast and uh, going faster each time. So now I'm going to show you how long we need for the whole way to my other base and you see it's uh, not really long anymore at all. With 19 that's the last one I'm going to show you. It's uh, barely a thing for seconds till we get down. By the way, on the other side I have uh, the thing where I did it in both directions. So I can go through them in each direction and be accelerated. Um, it's not really useful, like I said. I could take one half way and still have the the same um, use and uh, would save a lot of energy. Next up there are circular accelerators. So we have just a loop of accelerators and we don't need to build as many to get a high speed and have an entrance uh, at one side. Uh, when we go fast enough, we will get flung out of the loop and get accelerated actually pretty, pretty uh, fast. Um, but the acceleration highly depends on how you build them. Um, and it is, it is also just a hit to go. I tried different builds, sometimes uh, getting them a little bit uh, less close gets you faster sometimes getting them closer gets you faster um, 
it is really hard to say. So here's how I build one of those accelerators. Um, I move the supports over one meter with that one. So last one, the supports have been uh, four meters apart. This time they are five meters apart. And as you can see, the accelerator is a lot less effective. So I get barely to the height where I see the fog. Uh, and I can still see all of my factory. I'm not going as high at all as when I uh, placed them a little bit closer. And uh, I tried a second time the 4 meter apart, so uh, this time I placed walls again just to try to, to do that. And suddenly, yeah, well, it's, it's still a 4 meter apart one. It didn't ch change anything else. And I don't even get as high as the red trees anymore. So um, I get an acceleration of about, I would say, um, maybe six accelerators in line. So um, yeah, I, I, I really find it pretty, pretty um, unreliable uh, and it's I, I can't predict how good an accelerator would be. So like here I tried to get them closer together again and I found out that if the wall supports are less than uh, 4 meters apart, so that's 3 meters apart, they don't accelerate you suddenly anymore. So um, that one will just let me go in circles forever. And I also found that the hardware you're running the game on um, will uh, change the speed you come out of an accelerator. So with um, better hardware you will have overall higher speed uh, leaving the circles. So next up I build an accelerator with four entrances instead of two. And that one worked out pretty well. Uh, the main difference with the four entrances is that you get the speed a lot faster. But you need double the um, energy and you need a lot more room also. So um, I'm not quite sure about that uh, version as well. Um, I am probably going to stick to linear accelerators with the help of jump pads because I find them a lot more reliable. So what do I mean with that? Well, with the jump pads, we can go to higher places and we can do the same with the hypertubes, of course, as well. But if we combine those two, we get something pretty effective. So on the hypertube side, I had three accelerators, that's 30 megawatts of power usage. Here I have only one entrance and one jump pad, that's 12. And it's uh, a little bit faster. So uh, probably, uh, well actually I know it would uh, be about the same speed as when I use six accelerators. So um, that's what we can do with jump pads. And we don't can only do that with the vertical. With the tilted one we can do that in the horizontal as well. So all I do is I place a jump pad like that and have an entrance uh, near it or in, in jumping uh, direction and again that's 12 megawatts of power and I get a pretty good acceleration so I get to the lowest of those trees it's a pretty good acceleration I think and as you can see, you see we have six accelerators and we get above the same height um, maybe a little bit more but but really does make a huge difference so Six accelerators um, is about the same than, um, yeah, here you can see six accelerators is about the same than one jump pad and one entrance. So we have 60 to 12 megawatts and um, a lot less to build. And of course, you can. Uh, combine them with uh, a linear accelerator as well. 
so that's what I did here. Um, I placed four uh, entrances, so that's um, a little bit, well, one entrance less than a four-way um, circular accelerator, and it gives you about the same height than a bad accelerator. So the well-built circular accelerator gives you more. I would guess it gives you about the same as a jump pad with six accelerators in linear. But with jump pad and the six accelerators in linear, you have a fixed speed and it will be constant. And you can pinpoint exactly where you land. As you can see uh, in my roller coaster video, um, this jump is 100% always the same um, because I am only using linear accelerators and I just know where I'm going to land. On very, very huge distances, um, I have sometimes um, little um, changes where I land. So um, I have mostly two or three points where I land at and I think that though my computer sometimes skips one or two accelerators um, so it changes a little bit but um, or it changes those landing points around but again I'm going to land exactly as one of those three points and I'm going to be consistent with that. So I hope you liked the video, if you did give me a thumbs up, subscribe to help out the channel and press the bell icon, it really would help a lot. And also like I said before, um, I started to stream on Twitch, uh, link is in the description of course. So I would be glad to see you there and I also will answer specific questions uh, on Twitch if you have any and I can explain them to you. So have fun gaming and see ya next time. Bye bye.